Denise Glink. Welcome back to the Real Estate Minute, where I answer your questions, talk about what's happening in the real estate industry, and give you the latest money in real estate news. You can find the latest episodes here on my YouTube channel, Expert Real Estate Tips, every Monday and Friday, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button. On today's episode, I'll answer a question from a 50-something divorcee who's looking to buy a house and wants to retire in the next 10 years. Here's his question. In order to afford a house payment, I'll need to look for a home in the $200,000 price range. I'd need to sell about $60,000 in stocks for the down payment in order to be able to afford the monthly mortgage payment. I have $300,000 in stocks and bonds and would liquidate some of those. Do you think I should sell off that amount of stocks to invest in real estate, which is effectively what this would be? Will it delay my retirement plans? I think owning a house is a really good idea for most people in most situations. But the questions you have to ask yourself are where do you want to live after you retire and what kind of cash flow will you actually have? As long as you have enough money coming in to afford the mortgage payments and your other living expenses, your decision will come down to which investment is going to earn a better return. Now, if you take $60,000 and buy a house and the house appreciates in value at 2% per year, which is just above the rate of inflation, historically what real estate does, you're doing better on that investment than if you earn 5% in the stock market. Why? Well, you're earning 2% on $200,000, which is about $4,000 in the first year. You get to keep the profits tax-free when you sell, up to a quarter of a million dollars if you're single, and $500,000 if you're married. And if you itemize on your federal income tax return, you write off the interest in real estate taxes you pay all good. Now, if you earn 5% a year on your $60,000 in stocks, that's roughly $3,000 a year. When you sell the stock, assuming you've held the investment for at least a year and it is not being held in a qualified retirement account, you'll pay a maximum of 20% in capital gains tax. Now, while the mortgage taxes, insurance, and upkeep will cost perhaps slightly more than you'll pay in rent, Part of what you're doing is building up equity in your home with every mortgage payment. So in addition to your property appreciation, you're also adding to your savings. And, of course, you have to live somewhere. So it's not as if you could say the choice is buying or not buying. You're going to buy or rent or, I guess, live with your parents. But what you might want to do before you sell that stock is sit down with a fee-only financial planner to discuss your portfolio and its entirety and figure out which would be the best shares to sell. You can also work out how delayed, if at all, your retirement plans will be. I'm Elise Glink. If you've got a question about buying real estate, you should send it to me at questions at thinklink.com. You can also send it via Twitter, my Twitter handle, at Glink, at G-L-I-N-K. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next week. Mm